Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Sayabona, Dumela, Molo, Huinant. Look at us in this alternative Shabin. May live a day. And there you are at home watching TV One. That's so nice to know that you're watching TV and not sitting in the kitchen making an inventory of your toilet rolls and tin tuna, no? <laughs> We are having such a wonderful time here, and I hope you enjoy yourself at home. But remember, if you don't like what you're going to see, all you have to do is just switch off your TV. <laughs> remember, we don't have someone in Tainhase who can pick up the phone and change TV programs anymore. It's up to you. That's what democracy is all about. If you don't like it, switch off. Manoya, ons is almost so much. We are so tired. This election campaign is killing us. I know there's not one politician watching tonight because we're all sleeping with our dreams. Ne? <laughs> ah, yesterday I went to F.W. de Klerk's end rally at the Good Hope Center in Cape Town. Oh, it was vulnerable, like a national party rally with more black faces than white faces. Oh, it's costing us a lot of money. <laughs> Of course, uh, of course, you know the National Party is now open to all races and I was so excited to see people queue up to join the National Party. Whites queued up there, blacks queue up there and coloreds queue up here. <laughs> of course, the Indians fax through their checks. <laughs> so many wonderful things have been happening, but as you know, as the outgoing ambassador to Babeti Sweti. Uh, the homeland ceased to exist in three days' time. I've had my hands full putting them all to bed. That's to say the homelands that didn't just fall over. Like Bobo Tswana, I was there for three days, longer than Eugene Ter Blanche. I've been in and out of Ulundi to try and sort things out there. As you know, I've had great success because the IFP is in the election. Mike with your looks here, isn't he by a list for a Zulu crown? <laughs> I, I keep hearing Peter Tip say, remember Ungungungluvu, ne? My daughter is. Gacha is no met ons and ons is allemaal baie gelukkig. Of course, my new job as a one-woman commission of inquiry looking into the old symbols has been a great success. One of my triumphs is the new flag. I sat with Rufi and with Cyril for many months with their boxes of crayons working it out. <laughs> of course, you've seen it. You might even have burnt yours in the meantime. Here it is, ne? as a prachtige vlaggy. And there's a very, very symbolic reason for this letter Y. You might ask why. I'll tell you why. The Y stands for yield, because on Wednesday we will all have to yield either to the left or to the right. <laughs> if the left gets in, there'll be nothing right. If the right gets in, there'll be nothing left. <laughs> no, yeah, donkey. Um, I must go. The country still needs to be run. I just wanted to pop in and say to all of you, have a wonderful election in this coming week. Don't believe all the nonsense you read in the newspapers or that bad news on TV. Didn't you know elections always bring out the worst in politicians? It's just party politics, man. We've never had party politics before. We just had a government that won its own elections. <laughs> and just think, you'll have up to 26 political parties to choose from. Ach, excuse me, 27. <laughs> and if you don't know what to do on Wednesday, ach, do what you've always done in the past. Wear the DP t-shirt and vote for the National Party. Dangi! <laughs> yeah. uh, do you mind if I keep this on? <laughs> I need somewhere to put my eyelashes. Yeah. No, that's it. You were right, you were right. Because through all these years you've looked at Evita Besaidnet and you've said there's something not kosher with that woman. I can't put my finger on it. Well, you still can't put your finger on it, but you <laughs> It's like South African politics. You just can't put your finger on that either. I mean, what does one write about in an election campaign? Things change so quickly. So I can't think of material because the material writes itself. I have to work on structure. I have to decide, do I start the show as a woman and end up as a man, or do I play the whole thing as a South African? There are so many targets to work out. Which are the targets? In the old days, it was simple. You know, when I started Adapt to Die in 1981, there were so many targets. I mean, it was good against evil, black against white, the good guys were in jail, the bad guys were in parliament, and on the stamps and on the coins. There were so many answers then. Do you remember the answers? Free Mandela, we used to shout, and you'd say, who? Well, you had to be overseas to appreciate that one. We also said, down with apartheid, and now apartheid is down, and now we have no more answers. Now we just have questions. The question being, what the hell is going to happen now? So, I want to look back, not in anger, good heavens, no. I want to give credit where it is due. I want to...
pause a bit and look at the achievements of this extraordinary group of politicians, I'm trying to find the nicest words I can, who ruled this country since 1948, representing 5% of the population, and who did such an extraordinary job in doing to us what they did to us. In Keiko Legos, no. <laughs> I want to, of course, put on my, my Bruderbond outfit, of course, the matching tie. I've been worried about the feet. I don't know if you ever saw our politicians' feet. I never saw their feet on television or on photographs because I think feet of clay don't register. <laughs> so, uh, once I put on my lacquer jacket with all my bekende snarkies, comfortable shoes, like a plopus. And I'm going to start in 1948, the first Afrikaner Prime Minister. I was born in 1945, so that means I've had one government for all my life, and <laughs> I'm really looking forward to a change. <laughs> Dr. D. F. Milan, who was the first Prime Minister, was also my father's cousin. Well, I've always said satire starts at home. Uit die blauw van onze hemel, uit die diepte van ons zee. Waffle, waffle, NP, NP, God is on our side. <laughs> bubble, bubble, apartheid trouble. The Nieuwe Zuid-Afrika is here. Group areas act lekker, lekker. Paasloos, heerlijk. Ons zal leven, ons zal sterven. Ons voor jou, Zuid-Afrika. Hoor naar u, dokter, vervoerd. Die blow, I did blow from my twee oren. I did dip the van my heart. Waffle, waffle, NP, NP, all in the name of God. Bubble, bubble, here come trouble, shuffle, shuffle. The new, new South Africa is here, Republic, Republic. Immorality Act, Mixed Marriages Act, love your neighbor, but don't get caught. <laughs> ons zal leven, ons zal nooit sterven, ons voor jou, Zuid-Afrika. Oor na u, meneer Foster. <laughs> Uit die donker van ons tronke, uit die cellen van ons land, waffel, waffel, fretten, fretten, it is God's will. Bubble, bubble, info trouble. 90 day detention, 180 day detention. Steve Biko, yay, let me go. On zal leven, hulle kan sterven. Ons for you, South Africa, or na you. Out, out the blow van Elise Hoodens. Uit die diepte van ons kwaal. Waffel, waffel, wag the finger, lick the lips, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> bubble, bubble, riots and trouble. Quo vadis? So where to? So where to? The new constitution is here. Testing, testing, emergency one, emergency two, emergency three. <laughs> Adapt or die, total onslaught beyond the Rubicon. I will keep law and order in South Africa, and no one in the world is going to stop me. <laughs> I have looked into my crystal ball, 
And I have seen the emperor replaced by the clerk. It too, if you. Uit die blauw van ons democratische hemel, uit die diepte van ons democratische seer, waffel, waffel, nieuw NP, nieuw NP. All in the name of Pretoria Stroika. Bubble, bubble, no more trouble. Nkosi Sikileli, South Africa. Viva New National Party. Viva Amandla. Freistaat. I'm not here. <laughs> Officially, none of us are here. <laughs> Unofficially, most of us wish we were never here in the first place. <laughs> but because you are here, I have to be here. And so let me state here most categorically that the new National Party will, no, not will, shall, the new National Party shall win this election even if it kills you. <laughs> the National Party killed apartheid. Apartheid is dead. Apartheid is cold meat. Apartheid is kicked the bucket. Apartheid is bitten the dust. Apartheid is a cadaver. It's a dead body. It's a corpse. It is the light. Apartheid is pushing up daisies. Apartheid is shoveled off this mortal coil. Apartheid is doing. Apartheid is frank. Apartheid is in same mood. Apartheid is, and let me repeat that with conviction, I have never, never come across anyone who ever supported apartheid. <laughs> so don't believe all the propaganda. The ANC did not kill apartheid. The ANC became famous through apartheid. We in the National Party killed apartheid because we knew where we put it. <laughs> the National Party has always been very good to black people in South Africa. The National Party cleared District 6 and Sophia Town so that you could have nice musicals. <laughs> the National Party kept Nelson Mandela on the Robben Island for 20 years so that he could study for his degree in peace. <laughs> the National Party got rid of the Immorality Act and the Mixed Marriages Act, or else today Pete Kurnoff and Alan Buzek would be in jail. <laughs> so many panic me. Glumai. Alles sal links kom. Stem nationaal. In ou Zuid-Afrika, lekker nat. Thank you very much. Apartheid or dead? Apartheid or dead? Now, who said that first? I said that first, man. I said that all those years ago. And once more, I uh, wrote my thesis about that eh, at the University of Oxford. I said apartheid could never work, and I spent the rest of my life proving it. <laughs> Neumann, I, I fought the system of apartheid from within. I was the perfect secret weapon that the ANC had against apartheid. As you know, 
as you know, um, I used to make laws and people thought it was a joke. Then when I made jokes, they usually became laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, uh, I was the Oscar Schindler of a fine day. Bang, bang. You know, when things got too bloody obscene, I just exposed myself, man. <laughs> I uh, resigned, I fell off my pedestal. Hell, that was bloody like it. <laughs> and now I'm living with this very nice little girl in Milnerton. I love her and she loves me. I've always said, you know, sex and politics are very similar. You don't have to have any intelligence to enjoy either. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm very happy to say I can practice what I was never allowed to practice nor preach. <laughs> We've even got a little uh, a biologische wonderwerkje. Waar heb ik Ik wil vir julle wees. Waar is jy? Kom eens, Scott, is jy daar? Waar is jy, my liefde? Ek wil vir jou wees vir al die ooms en tannies. Kom eens, Scott, die bol, die jy wakker. Oh, is dat? Daar is my liefde. Is this not a beautiful baby? Is this not a beautiful baby? Now, I would like to show you. Something very important. This, as you see, is a baby, and this, as you see, is a ballot list. Now, I want to show you how you can use your ballot in an economic way while left holding the baby. It's very simple. It's by Mark Lip. First of all, this ballot is so big that you could even use it for a blanket to cover your baby. Thank God. Now your barbecue, no like it too. But that's not all. That's not all. Uh, you can also use it as a handkerchief to blow your nose if your nose is as big as Barbara Streisand's. <laughs> I caught you out there. Hey, what? Now, but that's not all. Now, if you're looking for a home, if you haven't got a house, and you're waiting for the ANC uh, to deliver on the election promise of building a million houses in five years, or is it five houses in a million years? Now, <laughs> this is big enough to be a roof over your head. You see, there you are. Bah, bah. That's not all, that's not all. If you're hungry and you're waiting for the PAC uh, to deliver on their election promise of putting food in your mouth, you know, after the PAC chase all the whites overseas and raid their fridges. <laughs> I can assure you the whites always take their fridges with them. Never mind, never mind. This ballot has been printed on high protein paper. The inks is nutritious and delicious. Lots of nice vitamins. You look on it like it. Eat. Cake is on. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, that's real fine like it. Yeah. And it's got a lot of roughage on it. It'll be very good for your tummy. Yeah, me say, you'll have cocks on them to be done. No, yeah. <laughs> and on the other hand, if on the other hand, you want to learn how to read and write, uh, you can do it by looking at your ballot very carefully. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see all those names have all the letters of the alphabet in them, including the letter X. Many Xs in those names, which you can then practice on this side of your ballot. <laughs> But if you don't want to learn how to read and write, because what's the point? There's nothing to read and no one's got anything to write. You can use this as a coloring in book. Look at that. All you have to do is uh, dip your finger in any open wound in the street and you'll have a lot of nice red to put on all the smiling faces. Ba, ba, ba. That's not all. That's not all. The final thing you can do with your ballot is, is use it as a nappy for your baby. As you can see, it's made from porous paper eh, that absorbs all the poo poo that is associated with the 26 brand names on this list. So, all you do is you take your little baby and you cover your baby with your ballot, which becomes, of course, your little nappy. On as your baby can lack it fast. Now, as you know, your ballot is secret, so you put it into the ballot box very gently. You don't want to throw your baby out in the ballot box. Your baby and your vote are as important as the future. Here, Khan. Take note. Ian Petri, gently in the ballot box. There you are. You see, viva democracy, viva true love. Viva, just for the sake of saying, bloody viva. Ah, upon it are dead, long live affirmative politics. Viva, now don't go away. Moenie weg aan nie, ons gaan gauw winkels doen. Viva. Well, it could not. I couldn't make him up if I tried. Well, that's goodbye to the past. That's goodbye to all the scriptwriters that did so much for me for all these years, giving me enough to say to keep me alive for all these years. But now they are retired, and they're going into the sunset with their golden handshakes clutched into their fists, uh, comprising of 70% of the taxes we paid for the last 25 years. So no more scriptwriters from the National Party. Now I've got to find new scriptwriters. I've got to look to the new government, and let me tell you something. I am so excited to find new chorus members. They are queuing up to audition. I've already got so much material I could perform for the next 25 years. I hope they let me. <laughs> First of all, I just want to put on my new politically correct <laughs> ethnic outfit. I call it my MK. My moi clearer. <laughs> and then on my feet, something very important. 
Take a thing, take a thing. <laughs> Affirmative Gucci. <laughs> I was a complacent white South African until I put two and two together. <laughs> much my friend. I, I am so relieved that at last I can speak from my own heart and not on behalf of so many of our brothers and sisters that were silenced by apartheid. And so I would like to just remind you that the miracle is still taking place. We are nearly a democracy. On Wednesday, please make your cross. Make your cross in order to bear your cross. <laughs> For if you do not bother to make your cross, you will have no right to be cross. <laughs> if you then find no Rubicon to cross, God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. As you know, uh, I am at the moment in the 11th hour of the 14th day of the 12th month of the 20th year of the speech. Uh, and if you uh, have not understood exactly what I've been saying from the beginning, I will be happy to start again, you know. Uh, but therefore, I would just don't have the time because of my election campaign. Of course, it's been very terrible the way I've been cheated out of time, you know, thanks to the National Party and the NC and their connivance to keep me out of the election, you know. <laughs> uh, and I said recently, you know, to uh, President Clerk and to Dr. Mandela, uh, and I reiterated this once again, and I said this with conviction, you know, and I would like to just repeat this here uh, to you, that uh, when we talked about violence, <laughs> uh, you know, I said that uh, we Zulus prevent violence. We do not cause I eat. <laughs> uh, and then I repeated all that, you know, again at the Kruger National Park at Awindaba, you know, and everybody agreed with me, even King Goodwill as well as after I kicked him under the table, you know, and I said, <laughs> I said to Dr. Mandela that we Zulus have no weapons. I have not seen a single weapon in KwaZulu, you know. I don't know who sucked this bullshit out of their thumb, you know. Uh, we just have traditional cultural weapons, you know, which is our heritage. Uh, and I said, a Zulu without his traditional cultural weapons is not a man. Uh, and a Zulu who is not a man uh, is not a Zulu. Uh, he is a Koza. <laughs> uh, and so now that I am back in the election, I just want to say to all of you people involved, you know, especially to Dr. Mandela and the ANC, Opas boot is Opas. Now there is a Zulu on your stoop. <laughs> <laughs> bloody sketch. I should have been in the previous sketch as President Ferdi Hatzenberg of the Boer Volkstag. I should have been with other traditional Afrikaner leaders because what are we in the CP other than the old nationalists that were left behind when the clerk and say Farayers got into bed with the ANC and the communist? And just because we are in a freedom alliance with Zulus and Vendas and Tswanas and Sestkosas, it does not mean to say that we are bending over blackwoods like the National Party. <laughs> We did not get into bed with these blacks, man. 
They hijacked the bed in which we were already lying. <laughs> on says what? On's place sit. So we are not going to take part in this election. We have just called out our Buddha folk start, and here it is, very simple. On paper, we want the whole of the transfer. Except for little pockets of Jews, English, liberals, and other rubbish. <laughs> we want a corridor to the sea. We want a corridor to the sea through Natal, which the Zulus will give us because they don't realize they still own it. <laughs> so that is it. This onsen, this halasen, this onsen, this halasen, this onsen, this is a complete blay onsen. This total onsen. But then on the other hand, the TEC has made us an offer we can't refuse for a Buddha folk start big enough for all our people. And we are going to move into that on the election day. Uh, it'll be the uh, vacant six top floors of a Sunlam building in Benoni. <laughs> Butulese has promised to build us a kraal on the roof so that our maids and houseboys can live on the premises. <laughs> on start, free start, full start. Ah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> And the ANC uh, are committed to a united South Africa. Uh, there, uh, there can be no uh, Buddha folk start for Afrikaners or a uh, KwaZulu Stan, as far as we are concerned. Uh, I have discussed uh, the proposals uh, with the President of the Clerk uh, and uh, rejected them in the strongest possible terms. However, we are. We uh, appreciate uh, King Goodwill Zualatini's uh, demand uh, for a uh, KwaZulu Kingdom in Natal. And uh, uh, we, uh, we realize the need for a Buddha folk start, uh, which uh, also should be uh, in Natal. We, uh, we therefore recommend a timeshare. <laughs> now, uh, now, uh, does anybody, uh, does anybody have a cool drink for me? <laughs> Did anyone buy me an Easter egg? You know, comrades, I've waited for over 27 years for a nice Easter egg. Comrades, is anybody there? Ah, here is the ballot. The ballot which we are going to have to fill in on Wednesday. This has been printed in the United Kingdom because I believe we don't have a security um, a arrangement around any printing firm in South Africa to protect these precious things. So five jumbo jets have been flying out these 86 million ballots. Somebody's saving a lot of money by doing that. Anything, sir? Oh, well, come on. In the old days, the Bruderbund got all the printing contracts. Now it's the returned exiles. Fair is fair. <laughs> there are, of course, 11 official languages here telling you what to do. What are the 11 official languages? English, Afrikaans, Zulu, Gaza, Swana, North Sutu, South Sutu, Venda, Swati. What else? Kugel, Cape Colored. <laughs> do you think it's practical having 11 official languages? What do you do if you've got a vicious Rottweiler at home? What sign do you put on the gate? Or does the gate become the sign? <laughs> Beware of the dog. Opas for the hond. Nkonto is sizwe. By the time that your Venda guest is looking for his language, the dog has bitten him on his backside already. <laughs> Well, here you can see the list um, is led by the PAC. That was uh, also a raffle to find out who would be first on the list. They seem to be doing a lot of that lately, eh? pulling things out of a hat or flipping a coin when it comes to an important thing about our future. Is that going to be the new democracy? <laughs> can you imagine in a month's time at the Union Buildings, you'd hear somebody say, Well, uh, or shall I we give Natal uh, its uh, independence, or shall we bomb it? Who's got a coin? <laughs> <laughs> So the PAC is top on the list. As they say, he who is first shall be last. <laughs> I, I like him, Clarence McQuaid's face. It's a nice face. I'm not so crazy about some of the other PAC members. Benny Alexander, who wants to be the um, prime minister of the PWV area. And of course, in the Cape, we have uh, Mrs. Patricia Delors. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patricia Delors, who keeps telling the white people to go back to Europe. It's nice coming from a person with such a French surname. <laughs> Patricia de <laughs> Do you know, I've, 
I've never seen Patricia DeLille and Ben Alexander together in the same room because I believe they share the same pair of false teeth, but I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure Sweden or Norway will give their PAC lots of election funds so at least these two people can eat at the same time. I like the symbol of the PAC. It's quite, quite nice with the green background and the Africa map with the center of their star, not centered in South Africa, but in Ghana. <laughs> now I've heard of Kak Bantu education, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe they... Maybe they're in the wrong country, huh? <laughs> Maybe the PAC and Apple should go back to Ghana and see what happens to them. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the sports organization for collective contributions and equal rights, known as Soccer, the party with balls. Um, <laughs> led by this guy who looks like an old Afghan. <laughs> 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 then the KISS party, the Keep It Straight and Simple party. This very intense lady, every time she's on agenda, she's so intense! <laughs> Please give her a valium, she's not going to make Wednesday. <laughs> There's General Constant Fulyun. He looks, he looks nice in color. <laughs> <laughs> he leads the Freedom Front. What is it with these right-wingers? I mean, in Russia, Vladimir Zeranovsky, that Nazi pig, leads the Liberal Democrats. Come back Adolf Hitler and lead the Bar Mitzvah party. <laughs> well, maybe the Freedom Front is that open door to those people who believe in the closed door. All those people in the CP and the Avia beer that keep saying, <laughs> Thanks to the secret ballot, they can now make their little cross for the general. And all the Zulu impis who are now so bloody confused, they don't know what's happening, will just out of habit vote for the man in uniform, Yabas. <laughs> <laughs> the, woman's, the woman's rights peace party is probably working out multiple orgasms in the new South Africa. <laughs> The Workers' List Party, which is a contradiction in terms. I hope they're making lists of stay-away days. I hope there are many stay-away days so we can find parking. <laughs> then we've got the Africa Muslim Party. Mm. After Salman Rushdie, not a word will pass my lips. Not a word. <laughs> then a whole collection of parties starting with the same name. The African Christian Democratic, African Democratic Movement, African Moderates Congress and African National Congress. Ach, no, man, that's not fair, man. Did Nelson Mandela spend 27 years in jail to get mixed up with this band of also rands? I mean, who's going to find the ANC on this list, eh? Firstly, if you can't read, secondly, if you're colorblind, and thirdly, if blacks all look alike, you're never going to find them. <laughs> Nelson doesn't even look like he needs votes. He's got Houghton written all over his face. <laughs> never mind, at least he's got a Nobel Peace Prize. We've got two Nobel Peace Prizes. Nelson got his for being in jail, and Declare got his for letting him out. <laughs> I don't think they got it for peace. But they did take the money, so they owe us one, hey? <laughs> Here is the Democratic Party. What can I say about the DP that they're not saying about themselves on their posters? No killers, no kidnappers, no torturers, no corrupt politicians. They shouldn't be in Parliament, they should be in the Vatican. <laughs> then the Federal Party of uh, Canton Kendall, the dark horse with the blonde hairstyle. Who knows, anything is possible. <laughs> I don't believe it. Leading the minority front. Minority front. <laughs> he's in such a minority, he's become his own front. <laughs> but even he looks nice, hey? He's taken his hair to the dry cleaners. <laughs> and then the bottom of the printed list, ons a nieuwe nationale partij, led by clever Fricky. And of course, Fricky is clever because what he's been saying at his rallies is, vote for the party at the bottom of your list. Not anymore. <laughs> Look what we've got at the last minute. A sticker key. Or as we say in Afrikaans, a plucker. <laughs> the IFP has become the squatter on the ballot list. Huh? <laughs> this is going to cause no end of trouble. First of all, if this thing is not stuck on properly, it's a, it's a non-vote. And I mean, can, can, is Butelezi going to stick to this? I mean, he can't even decide how to pronounce his own name. <laughs> What's he going to do? Take the whole election to the Supreme Court and have it chucked out and we have to start again. Anyway, Fricky the Clever is really taking this in his stride. Now he just says, well, all you do is vote for the only bald man on the list. <laughs> now, if Rashbanzi hadn't been so vain... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine what... <laughs> 
can imagine what's happening in the free state on the farms. Mit die Bude, die Manne. Kussi, ja, was? Nipp. Was ist noch eine Demokratie, Kussi? Ich sehe nicht mehr, was nicht. Ja, was? Okay, so listen. Listen, Kussi. I know you hate the National Party. Nipp, was? Mann, I know you hate us. So when you go into your voting booth, don't worry about that bloody sticker, man. From the top of the back. Then you take your pencil, and to show how much you hate us, you make a big cross at the bottom of your list. <laughs> oh, but he's not going to be silly. He's going to say, no, boss, I am not going to vote for the National Party. I'm going to vote for the ANC. Hey, <laughs> if you can find them. But if you find them, Gwazi, to show how much you like the ANC, you put a tick. <laughs> Don't go away. We're going shopping quickly. <laughs> Right, now we're going to get to the real people, the people who matter on Wednesday, the people who are going to change the world on Wednesday, the silent majority. I've got such a hangover, I can't believe it. Uh, when am I going to learn not to mix my drinks? What is the time? Oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> hello, how's it? Ah, hello, who's it? Is that the ANC? ANC, comrade, I want to speak to Dora in fundraising. Okay, I'll hold. I'll hold. A way to, to you too. <laughs> A cyborg and non sir. Where's Dora? Is she on the other phone? Tell her to get off the phone. Say it to her, madam. <laughs> Dora, what are you doing on the phone? You're not at home now, you know. <laughs> oh, listen, I know I should have been at the meeting at 10, but what's the time now? 2.30. So what's that in African time? Five minutes late. <laughs> oh, Dora. I have a slip, man. You know me. You were my maid for 10 years. 12 years. My goodness, have you started counting? <laughs> I never did that. I always treated you as a human being. Hell, it wasn't easy. <laughs> oh, now, how did you get by on 200 rand a month? You did what? Oh, no! I wondered what had happened to it. How much did you get for it? Dora, you were robbed. <laughs> no, no. I'm not cross. No, how can I be cross? My dear, if, I, if, I, if you didn't steal from me when you were my trusted maid, you're certainly going to steal from me now you're my trusted government. <laughs> oh, it's a joke, Dora. Lighten up, my dear. If you're going to become a political entity of note, you must develop a sense of humor. Learn from Madam. It's called bittere Gelechter. <laughs> Never mind, look it up. OK, I'll be there as soon as possible. I'll come by car if it hasn't been recycled as a taxi. <laughs> Okay, Dora, Amandla, Viva, Le Cucaracha. <laughs> My dear, if I'd known where that black woman would have been today, I would have paid her 300 rand a week. <laughs> Isn't that a nightmare come true? Do you remember how we used to talk around the dinner tables in the old days, wondering what would happen if the maids became the madams after the revolution? And here we are. Okay? So what do we talk about now, us committed liberals, if the maid's not sitting next to you? I don't know. Last night I went to this dinner party. I nearly plutzed. I felt so ill eating all that food. But anyway, over the hors d'oeuvres, we talked about trying to get to places on the freeway while people throw stones at us. I suppose the only answer is to wear a crash helmet in the car. <laughs> then over the main course, we talked about restaurant robberies. You know, when the schmucks run in with their AK-47s, just after the crayfish cocktail. Well, I said, the secret is don't take any jewelry to a restaurant in South Africa. Take a little bit of change to appease the robbers and just take a condom in case one of them understands English. <laughs> then over coffee we talked about preventing your car being hijacked in the major cities. Well, that's very easy. When you get to a, to a red light, slow down but don't stop. And don't speed because you'll knock over a picking in begging. <laughs> of course, after that we discussed in detail the new proposed wealth tax. Well, that's a pain for those of us who have it, eh? I don't think it's such a bad idea, considering we've got so much and they've got so little, in spite of what we've allowed them to steal and sell. Now, I even said this to Dora. I said, listen, Dora, 
I'm quite happy to voluntarily contribute 15% of my husband's assets as a wealth tax. But now tell me, who's going to gather and who will scatter? Hmm? <laughs> Don't tell me the poor schmucks haven't learned from past governments to know what to steal, when to um, tax and how to run. And as irony will have it, after all those years in jail and or exile, they'll win their first election, toy toy their way up to the union buildings and find the kitty empty. <laughs> all that's there is a half bottle of 10-year-old brandy in Pip Wurta's office and a warped cassette of Onsa Mini singing de stem. <laughs> I suppose it all started all those four and a half years ago, you know, when De Klerk freed Madiba and the ANC became legal. I went to the first ANC meeting down the road in Sharon's garage. I went with Dora. I wanted to see what these people looked like and I wanted them to see me with a black, you know, to give me some credibility. <laughs> anyway, I was really impressed by them. Dora started doing a lot of work in her room at the back, so we turned her room into a little office and we moved Dora into the main house, into the spare room, which was great when I had my bridge parties. I could, I could introduce Dora as my new friend. <laughs> anyway, one day I was uh, driving her to work, you know, and I just said, as a matter of jokes to somebody, can't I get a permanent job here with the ANC? Do you know what they said? They said, I'm too white. They said, I'm too old. And I said, am I too rich? And they said, no. So that's what I'm doing. Every businessman in South Africa owes me a favor. So I'm fundraising for the ANC. My friends in California are so jealous they could plutz on the spot. <laughs> it's so easy raising funds nowadays. I have so many friends who are just dying to get out of the country before the election and of course can't sell anything because it's too late and no one's got money. So I send them to the lost city for a night, during which we arrange a little burglary. They come back, find their house empty. They go, oi, oi. They claim the insurance, they get on the first plane to America. Meanwhile, we sell all their antiques to some returned exile who's dying for some Eurocentricity and Bob's your auntie. <laughs> Mediba himself is so impressed with me that he's had a t-shirt made. Jesus raised Lazarus, I raise funds. <laughs> of course, I've been raising funds for years. I just used to call it remarriage. Now, let's see. Ah, my crowning glory, lest I forget. At least I don't have to go to the hairdresser every morning. <laughs> so make my day, call me a kugel. See if I care. There are so few of us left in South Africa that I'm now a rare and protected species. Anyway, compared to all the black kugels around, I might be a Buddha Macy working for Trust Bank. Do you know what we call the ANC Women's League powder room? Kugeletu. <laughs> Now let me see if I got everything. I've got my telephone, I've got my passport, I've got something in case I go to the pick and pay. I've got my future. Ah, I nearly forgot. There we are. Now I'm ready for the freeway. That's something I promised myself when I joined the ANC. I said, no, well, fine. Every time you go to ANC headquarters, you go dressed to kill. Mabuza Ansato, and I would like to. I would like to welcome you to my program. As you can see, I am black, I am beautiful. I started life in the dusty streets of Soweto and then went to America where I picked up this great American accent. But I refuse to wear my glasses so I cannot see anything on the teleprompter. As a result, I don't know what the hell is going on. But as you know, this is no longer the SABC. 
This is now known as the SANC, and all you need to be a success has a double barrel surname and the private number of Stevie Wonder. Which camera am I on there? Ah, today's program. Today's program is very simply about voting, balloteering, electioneering, lying, cheating, stealing, toy toying, help me out, fellas, where am I? Toy toying, third forcing, hoping, waiting, wanting, wondering, panicking. <laughs> what is going to happen on the 27th of April? Is there going to be a life beyond the election? Is there going to be a life worth living beyond the election? Should we, should we go to the Seychelles and just sit it out there? Should we stock up on tanned feed, on tinned food? <laughs> what happens if there is no chaos over the election period? What is going to happen to us who have to live off 2,000 runs worth of tin tuna? Can anyone live off 2,000 rands worth of tin tuna? That is the answer. The answer is very simple. The answer is on everyone's lips. The answer is on polls and posters. The answer is very simply confusion. That is the answer. What was the question, sir? <laughs> Thank you for your contribution. That is what democracy is all about. Now, my last comment is the following. What is the point? What is the point to democracy in South Africa? Is there a point in democracy in South Africa? And if there is no point to democracy in South Africa, why is everyone pointing at democracy to make that point if the whole thing is pointless. Thank you very much. My name is Felicia Mabuza Sacco. And this is Yeah. Now listen, my dear, before we start this interview, please promise me one thing. You won't use my real name in the interview, no? I don't want the neighbors to know who I am. Oh, all I need now is a stone through the window of my lounge. You know, the violence in this area is terrible. I see it with my own eyes. How those ANC kids come from the township and stand at the school waiting to throw my children with a stone, no? And don't tell me they're only reacting uh, to all those years of apartheid and discrimination. Machis, man, they're only 10 years old. Yeah, we coloreds have also suffered just like they did. Some of us even more because we've got brains. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know that you overseas people who do interviews always refer to us Cape coloreds as mixed race or black. Ach, excuse for me, no? I'm nearly more white than you. Look at the skin. It's not black or brown. It's pink. Oh, I would bugger up my children if they ever brought home a kakaka black to marry. No? <laughs> that sort of thing could pollute the blood. Yeah, you can have a cup of black coffee and no matter how much milk you pour into it, the black coffee always hangs around somewhere inside just waiting to come out. No? <laughs> Not that it's a problem with me, no? because uh, my grandfather was German. Yeah, you can see it in my nose. German, not Bantu. Mm. Do you know this used to be a very nice colored area until the ANC moved in? Oh, I won't even go to the corner shop that used to be run by those coolies. Now it's so black and so political. I won't even be seen dead there at the green grocers that have been taken over by this communist who returned from exile. Nay, man, I know rubbish when I see it, no? I was spitted at the other day by one of their children in a communist party t-shirt with all the antichrist slogans. Uh-uh, you've got to draw the line somewhere, no? 
It's not that I'm anti-democratic, you must understand. It's just I'm against Ahmed. You know, I even miss the Jews that used to run those shops before they emigrated. But you can't blame Jews for going overseas if they've got money there to avoid the violence. No? Yeah, they say when the Jews start packing, it's time to go. When the Portuguese start packing, it's too late already. <laughs> And you know, those few Jews that still stay here because they've got about as little as me, which I doubt when they go to so bloody scalum, they're the first to vote for an ANC communist government just to make money. It's not that I'm anti-Semitic, you must understand. Eh? It's just I'm against... Achman, just take the desecration of the Jewish cemetery there by the station. First they say it's the Avi beer, then they say it's the communist rubbish, man. It's the Jews themselves. They keep doing that sort of thing to make us colleges look bad. No. <laughs> Just because some of us are Muslims, they think we are all Arabs. Yeah, but of course, I don't know any Jews, so it's got nothing to do with me. No, no man, I think I was politically naive until I found out that my children were forced to boycott their own classes at school. Intimidation of the children. Naive, that's not the bloody limit. No? Mandela keeps talking about education, education. Then we get to school, they burn down the building and try and kill the teachers. No? Not so long ago, we got a new nursery school down the road. 49 places for blacks, 17 for the others. There's no that there's no the colored the Indians and and the, and the whites near does he fanny, no? My little boy was in a fight with a with a black child at school, no? They call my child a scholar and he cover from come Scott Frieda. I'm sorry, we've got to get out of this place, no? I don't want my kids to meet anyone from this area. And this is going to be the biggest slum, no? because all the squatters will get the best houses and bugger it up under an ANC communist government. Yeah. So call me a missionary in the jungle. <laughs> I distribute our National Party posters and pamphlets at 4 a.m. No? so no one can recognize me and beat me up. Oh, there are some animals around here, hey? Absolute animals. Not that I'm anti-black, you must understand. How can I be? My daughter-in-law is black, no? Not that I see her as a black because her grandfather was Italian. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it in her hair. It's Italian, not Bantu. Yeah. She's not crazy about the idea that I belong to the new National Party, but when she comes in, she can see my point of view, no? Man, we've all suffered under apartheid, but now let bygones be bygones. Oh, yeah, I tell you, it's been absolutely terrible and there's nothing I can do about it. And that is why I'm going to vote for the National Party, my Leicester. Please, just promise me one thing. Don't use my real name in this interview, no? Just give me a pseudo plume. No? <laughs> Call me Mrs. Mazibuko or Mrs. Patel. I don't want people to think I'm a racist. No? Not that I am a racist, but they might think it because of what you write. And, and I don't want that in my life now, not with the baby coming and the twins and the, and the four children from my first husbands. No? Who laughed us in the, oh, pity! Slana the TV is safe for loving! <laughs> Listen, I must be straight with you. We are all terrified of the day that the blacks will overrun this country, no? because they've got far more children than we've got, and we're living among the dregs of humanity here, my dear, the dregs. But don't get me wrong, no? I'm not going to vote for the National Party because I'm against the, the blacks in the ANC, or the Indians in the PAC, or the Jews in the DP, or the others. No, man, I'm voting for the National Party because rather the devil you know than the devil you don't. <laughs> So, in a few days, we do it. We've been waiting since 1652 to do it. And now it's the first time we in this country can all do it together at the same time. Everybody's excited, everybody's frightened, but it's going to be the most unique experience that any nation has had because we can all start again from the beginning. When I was in Cape Town, a bad guy put it into a nutshell for me. I mustn't call him a bad guy, he's a potential voter. <laughs> this old bad was sitting under a big cardboard box, checking me out as he was parking my car, and he said, Yay! He said, Oh, I said, Yeah, Jay, Jay! On the 27th of April, Nelson Mandela is going to take over South Africa. I said, No, I said, No. <laughs> and on the 28th, I'm going to take over your car. <laughs> I said, Yeah, I said, Yeah, so see that it's clean. <laughs>
Baie welkom hier by ons. Hulle is die nieuwe rookies in a manswereld. As ons hulle toelaat om met die chauvinistische twak weg te kom, loop ons binnenkort met hoog en ons enigste werk sal wees om prostitietese kliënte uit te loop. Aan die andere kant, as jy verlies in a patrolliemotor. Molly het haar handen vol om haarself in die chauvinistische politiewereld te bewys. Die heren dit is in vanavond dat alle geestposte tussen die twee lande haar opening gaan word. Nog een dag in verwereldstede is in Genève bereik met die bekrachtiging van een ooreenkomst tussen Noord-Korea en die VSA oor die beperking van Noord-Koreaanse omstrede kernprogram. Noord-Korea sal ingevolge die ooreenkomst sy... Die internationale rugbyvoetbalraad het die Suid-Afrikaanse rugbyvoetbal in die opdracht gegee om onderzoek in te stel of sy president, Dr. Louis Lloyd, die spel dier onlandse uitsprake skade brokken het. Afgevaardigd is op die raadse vergadering in Vancouver, Canada, sê hulle is bekommerd dat beweerde uitlatings van Dr. Luid rugby in het diskrediet gebring het. Volgens die Londense tijdskrif het Dr. Luid gesê, die thuis-nazi'se organisering van die wereldbeker toernooi in 1991 was lachwekkend en ambtenare van die vijf nazi's boord in die pad gesteek te word. Hy sê ook gesê dat Unie Rugby nog net een naam een amateerspel is. Sarfo is gevra om vast te stel of die artikel een getrouwe weergave is van Dr. Luidse uitlatings. Wayne Ferreira is een segetocht die afgelopen paar maanden is gestuid. Die Zwitser Marc Marc Rosset het die Zuid-Afrikaner in die kwart eindronde van die Lyon toernooi in Frankrijk met 7-6 en 7-6 uitgeskakel. Ferreira is op die oomlik elfde op die internationale punte leer. Boland het die vrijstaat lelik op sy nees laat kyk in die Benson en Hedges cricketwedstrijd in Bloemfontein, toe hy die thuispan met 60 loopies geklop het. Boland het in sy 50 beerte 232 vir 9 aangeteken en die vrijstaat is in die 40ste beurt vir 172 loopies uitgehaal. En in Durban het Natal Westransval met 6 palkies geklop. En om jy af te sluit, in Britannia het nog een spogerige tonnelsneltrein van Jerustar sy baas het die tweede keer in twee dae in die steek gelaat. Hierdie keer was dit die treinreis van die maatskapie se base self, Britse spoorweghoofde en een groep skoolkinders wat onderbreek is. Jerustar was nog bezig om sy wonde te lek na die betalje gister, toe die wereld media buikens een uur lang moes wacht toe die trein wat hulle op een spogrit na Parijs sou neem gebreek het. En die keer het die trein van buikens 140 miljoen rand gaan staan, kort nadat dit by Kalei aangekom het. En die passasiers moes weer een uur lang wacht, voordat een plaasvervanger opgedaag het. Daarmee die einde van hierdie bulletin. Tot de volgende bulletin binnenkort. Lui lekker. Een hierdie klassieke ontspanstoel met zwart zachte leergevoel en voetstoel van Louis. Voor net 399 rand? Huh? Jy spaar 100 rand, dis reg, slechts 299 rand. Gauw, voor het verdwijn. Maar voor jy ontspan, dis ook beskikbaar een ingevoerde grijs dreilon. Onoortreffelike waarde, waar anders as by Lewis. giant scratch card from Etuba Games. Scratch once, then scratch again. Yes, two chances to scratch and win up to 250,000 rands instant cash. Megabucks, the biggest scratch in Africa. Now available at win -a lot outlets nationwide. It is 18 minutes before 8. We are going forward with morning South Africa. Yes, and uh, right now we go back to Delia Sainsbury, who's going to be talking to Dr. Hay of the NSRI. The Cape is preparing itself for the annual... annual for the NSRI, and he's going to tell me about this amazing operation that was staged down here. Welcome to GMSA, Dr. Hayhurst. Morning, evening. Now, first of all, with the holiday season coming up, it must be an absolute nightmare for the rescue operations down here. Well, particularly for the NSRI, yes, we have a lot of people who come down here particularly to come to the seaside. They're not particularly au fait with the sea, and all sorts of things can go wrong. Mm. Now, what sort of stupid things do people do? Well, you know, with all due respect to the Transvaalers, you know, I think they think that round Robben Island, just over the horizon, is a damn wall. Oh, dear. And they don't realize that the sea has tides mm. that come and go, 
and that there's wind, winds down here in Cape Town, as we've just got experience of here this morning. Mm. And people go out on inflatable tubes and go windsurfing, yeah. and uh, well, accidents happen. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right. Well, let's have a look at this um, rescue operation now. Perhaps you'll talk us through it. All right. Let's have a look and see what's going on here. All right. Here we have a simulated fire on a tug in the waterfront. Mm. There are casualties trapped and people blown overboard into the water. Mm. How many people are actually involved in this operation? You mean casualties? Um, well, no, rescue, rescue oh, services. Must be probably close to 100 of all the rescue services in Cape Town are on board. Mm -hmm. Why did you specifically choose the waterfront to stage this? Well, you know, the waterfront is a busy tourist area and the season's coming, and we felt the need to test the responses of the waterfront and our own emergency service. Now, um, what is actually going on here? Well, here you see the fire brigade are responding. Mm -hmm. They will be the first people on scene. There are people trapped underneath the decks of the tug. Mm -hmm. So they're putting on breathing apparatus, going to work to fight the fire, and putting people under the decks to uh, rescue. Are the people that are involved in these operations, are they volunteer workers, or are they people who are actually on salary? Well, I think I must just uh, put a punt here for the NSRI. The NSRI are the only truly volunteer rescue organisation. Mm -hmm. All the members of the NSRI are unpaid volunteers who donate their time and their services for nothing. And how many people do you think in a season do they actually save? I think on average we do about one call a week during the season, but of course we can do three or four calls in one day. Mm -hmm. all, we really can't predict what's going to happen. Here you see the Air Force are involved. They're here to winch up people out of the water and take them to the medical post. Now you've got the Air Force involved as well. So how do they also work with the NSRI? Well, we have a complex communication network which we can call for assistance when we need it. And I must say the Air Force have always been very... Do you get many foolhardy amateurs? <laughs> we get a few. Now we're in the helicopter flying towards the hospital. And how long would this take from start to finish to actually winch somebody out of the water and to get them to the hospital? Oh, the actual winching takes minutes and then probably, well, I, I know we flew from the waterfront to Milnerton in the Puma and it took three minutes. Here we're unloading casualties at the Milnerton Hospital. It's very impressive, I must say. <laughs> Thank you, we do our best. Okay, so um, getting a mobile chase. 